What's cracking? Big dose. Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday, and we are not yelling. New episode of Why You Yelling. Not up today because we are doing those bi-weekly. So I will be doing some obscure mock drafts every other Sunday for y'all. Let me know what type of weird league settings you guys have, and I will try to get around to as many weird drafts as I possibly can. The most popular request we had in uh, two weeks ago's mock draft was for a 14-teamer. We got we to gotta show some love to them large drafts out there because things get a little dicey, man. Once you start getting to the 14, the 16, the 18, uh, anything can fucking happen, man. You don't, you, you don't get a lot of choice there. Things get a little bit crazy. Um, you got to start taking weird strategies. So I'm here today to help out y'all that are in the big leagues. Those of y'all that have a lot of friends, have a lot of family members. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. We're going to do the draft today on Sleeper. This is going to be a 14 teamer. This is going to be probably half PPR. Um, we're going to do super flex, okay? Because everything we do here at BDGE is geared towards super flex leagues, okay? Uh, it's the future of fantasy football. It's, it's, it's been the past of fantasy football. I haven't played in a non-super flex league in like four years. Uh, if you're not in a super flex league, if your home league, if your friends league is not super flex league, I would highly, highly suggest. There's a reason all the data is shifting towards super flex leagues, people, okay? There's a reason everyone likes it. There's a reason once you go super flex you don't go bite. This is the most fun league setting. Opens up just about everything. Engagement, trades, waiver wire, the draft. Everything's more fun as a super flex league. Okay? So before you comment, oh, I hate super flex league, just fucking save that shit for yourself. Save, save it for yourself. Save it for at least for a weekday. Don't be doing that shit on a weekend. All right? So today, 14 teams, super flex. And before we get into it, we're going to be doing it on Sleeper. But before we get into it, Sleeper is a uh, very good customizable website to do your mock drafts on. However, the best place to actually practice your drafts, because they are money buying leagues, they're best ball leagues, so you don't actually make any in-season moves, is Underdog Fantasy, okay? And Underdog Fantasy is giving away what is arguably the most valuable thing we've ever given away at BDGE, a spot in the BDGE NYC Draft Weekend. 11 of you guys, 11 subscribers, we've already filled 10 of the spots, we have one spot to give away, are getting flown out to New York City. August 27th to August 29th. This giveaway is closing within like the next eight days. I think I gave them a cutoff day of uh, August 9th. Okay. So you have about eight days. Happy August, by the way. Eight days before this giveaway ends. We're flying you out to New York City. You're staying with us in an Airbnb. We're doing a high stakes fantasy football league together. We're doing a live draft in person. Then we're going to hang out in Manhattan for the rest of the weekend. It's going to be a fucking awesome time. And you have to be 21 or older to enter. Okay. Unless you got a really good fake ID. To do so, download the Underdog Fantasy app. It'll be the first link in the description down below. And when you deposit $10 or more, use the promo code BDGE, okay? Not only will they give you entry into the giveaway, but, but, it'll give you $25 on top of the $10 you deposited. So you're getting $35 to draft with. That's 11 different $3 leagues plus an iced coffee, as long as you don't live in Manhattan. That would be like one third of an iced coffee, Okay. Underdog Fantasy. Use the promo code BDG when you deposit 10. You're getting entered into the NYC BDGE Draft Weekend Giveaway. Let's fucking go. Oh, I forgot I'm recording this and I can't fucking... I'm not going to edit it afterwards, so we can't throw the intro onto it. Just pretend that we have the intro fucking flocking out here. All right. Ooh, beautifully done. Okay, so we're on Sleeper. Sleeper.app. They also have an app on the mobile phone. So we have a... Uh, let's change the draft settings. BDGE 14 team super flex mock. We're going to go to quarterback as always 14 teamers. This is the correct settings. If you want to do a mock draft where the uh, picks get auto picked. So you, you, you can set it to whatever time limit doesn't matter, but do CPU auto pick when the user time runs out. Do not click no limit. It will not work. You, have, you must put a timer on the actual time per pick in order for them to do auto picks roster settings one quarterback and the super flex here two running backs three wide receivers tight end six bench spots cool update boom uh i don't know where to choose from i don't know where you guys would like to see me draft from i'm gonna go ahead and take it from the you say we fuck around and just take the 114 let's do it on the turn here okay flog it so this is a 14 teamer half ppr again super flex now the most important thing to get across here is again we talk about positional scarcity a lot on this channel and why it's so important to be hitting running backs and why it's so important to be hitting quarterbacks in the beginning of your drafts this is like taking positional scarcity 
and making that shit scarce. Okay. So th it's even here's, here's like the overall takeaway. If you want to take away nothing else, it is wait on wide receivers. You must wait on wide receivers because running backs and quarterbacks are going to rip off the board in a 14 team, 16 team, 18 team league. The bigger the league, the more you wait on the wide receivers because the player pool of wide receivers that you can use is so fucking large in your fantasy lineups. I'm telling you, you could use wide receiver twos and threes and even four. Something like you can go to like the Buffalo Bills and start three wide receivers from that fantasy team and be OK. You can go even like the New Orleans Saints without Michael Thomas. You can still draft a guy like Trey Quan Smith or, Mar or Marquez Callaway in the 11th round and they would be OK as your wide receiver three. You can't do that with running backs. OK. You can't do that with quarterbacks, okay? So you need to get your running backs and quarterbacks early and often. That is the way we are going to go into this. We'll see what happens, but that's how we need to attack this draft. So you're going to see a theme here. You're going to see running backs. You're going to see quarterbacks rip off the board very, very quickly. Okay, let's see the player pool. Now, I guess this is not necessarily updated with, or the ADP is not updated because Aaron Rodgers and uh, Aaron Rodgers just came back to camp a couple couple days ago, so they don't really have like Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams kind of in the correct player pool. Okay, I know what I just said. Devontae Adams, you know, wide receiver, not a guy I would take here. I'm I'm going to operate as if. Uh, Devontae Adams would be off the board because he will be. I'm assuming Aaron Jones probably will be too. You can look at the quarterbacks. I'm going to go with two running backs here, okay? I really like to start with two running backs and secure those starting running back spots because by the time it comes back to me at the 314, the 4-1, there's going to be almost nobody good left. So I'll get these guys. I want to secure one quarterback by the time my first three rounds is up. So we will hit those next time. I'm definitely going to go with Zeke here. Y'all know I love Zeke. He was on a monster pace with Dak under center last year. He's looking mean. He's looking ripped. I'm getting a lot of questions of whether or not the, uh, the workload is something I'm concerned about because the Dallas Cowboys just came out and said they don't want to give him 20, 25 carries a game. I'm okay with that because his target total, he was on pace for like 95 targets last year with Dak under center, okay? So if his carries come down in between the 20s, whatever. As long as he keeps catching passes, as long as he's the goal line back with the offensive line back and healthy, going to be really strong. Team's going to have a lot of scoring opportunities. Zeke is very, very much worth the 114. And then you can kind of get your pick of um, whatever running back you want here. So... In my rankings, which will be released soon in our draft guide, which is not out yet, guys, I apologize. I'm pr I promise you I'm working as hard as I possibly can to get it out. I would be taking Aaron Jones here. He's my favorite back. But if you're in a standard league, maybe you like Nick Chubb more. If you're in a full PPR league, maybe you like Austin Eckler here. We're going to go with Aaron Jones. We'll start off with Zeke. We'll start off with Aaron Jones. <clears throat> Killer one-two punch there. I think we can have two top five backs right off the rip. For me, I would rather have uh, an elite tight end in a smaller league than a larger league. If if your question is, should I use one of those picks? Because I can't I can't see myself using a premium pick on a tight end when I need to be stocking up on quarterbacks and running backs. So we're back on the clock at the three fourteen, and there are still some good quarterbacks left, obviously. And I want to take at least one of them. The way I look at super flex leagues is like you want one high end quarterback. I don't think it is necessary to use two premium picks on two high end quarterbacks. Because once you get into, most people don't realize this, but once you get into like the Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts range, like once you drop off that first elite tier of quarterbacks, the point per game difference between like quarterback eight and 15 is not that large. So it's not a huge uh, reach not to step up there. And I'm looking at the other running backs and I'm like, okay, we can grab a wide receiver. We can grab Terry McLaurin, who I probably should be a little bit higher on. Um, no one I want a tight end. I'm going to take my first quarterback, and I'm going to go with Tom Brady. And obviously, depending on your scoring settings, you might take somebody else. If it's four point per passing touchdown, I don't know. Maybe you look at like a Ryan Tannehill who's got a little bit more rushing upside. But I think Tom Brady is as safe as they come at 314 in a super flex league. That is beautiful. We could double tap quarterbacks, but by the time my next turn comes around the 514, I bet you like a Baker is still available. I bet you uh, even like a Daniel Jones, who I really like this year. I think he's got some upside. I know he's going to be sporadic in the passing game, but I'm still with Daniel Jones this year with the rushing upside. And them adding more weapons, <clears throat> so I think your best bet here, you want to you want to walk away from the first three rounds, pretty much. You know, I, we don't like to just tailor a strategy and say that's the blanket statement. But two running backs and a quarterback, or two quarterbacks and a running back, I think needs to be your strategy here because you'll see once we hit round six, seven, eight, there's still going to be very good wide receivers that you feel very comfortable starting. So now I'm sitting here 
and we saw some good running backs. And I'm going to grab a third running back because we get to use two flex spots. And I would rather use running backs in the flex than wide receivers. Um, and my eyes are on David Montgomery and Chris Carson. And, you know, it's kind of a toss up, whoever you like more. I personally like Chris Carson a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more than David Montgomery. I like what this uh, Seattle offense is is buzzing out of camp right now, that they're going to be up tempo. They're going to be high paced. And I think that's going to lead to a pretty nice, a pretty nice receiving year for Chris Carson. Chris Carson was banged up last year, but if you look at his efficiency numbers, he was just as good as any other year in his career. He was on pace to uh, see like 65 targets last year. So if we see, you know, he's kind of like a Zeke Light, where yes, you like him for his rushing upside, his goal line work, his you know just the, the carry volume that he's going to get. But outside of that, um, he has sneaky upside in the passing game because of the offense that he's in in the up tempo. So I don't like any of the running backs left. I feel really good that we got our three running backs there. And there you go. We still have Baker. We still have Kirk Cousins, depending on who you like there. And then we still have some really good wide receivers here, right? We're into the fifth round. We're stacked at running back. We have our high-end quarterback one. Do we like any of the tight ends left? Absolutely fucking not. But we have good wide receivers. I probably don't want to wait another turn pick to go to the wide receiver group because it gets a little bit questionable afterwards. And then you can start asking yourself, do I take a second quarterback here? Where I double tap on wide receivers because it is a 14 team league. I'm going to be honest. This is pro- I don't want to say it's unrealistic, but more quarterbacks would probably be off the board. The bigger the league type, especially super flex, the quicker these quarterbacks rip off the board. So we're definitely going to get our quarterback two here. Uh, I will take Kirk over Baker, but I don't think that I, I think it's completely neg- negligible. And both of them are going to finish like very close to each other in the rankings at the end of the year. Then we're back up at our next pick and uh, Cooper Cup, Deontay Johnson. I'll take Cooper Cup. I think uh, he's playing in a safer offense. He's playing with a safer quarterback. So just give me stability at the wide receiver one position, even though I think Deontay Johnson will be fine. It doesn't really matter. Again, I think they're both very good players. Both will be fine for fantasy. But Cup, I just think, has a lot of upside. For him to be going later than Robert Woods, I just think it's still a little bit silly. I think Cooper Cup is the only one who's actually shown touchdown upside. Uh, one of these wide receivers has to have upside in this offense with Stafford coming over. No more... Uh, no more Cam Akers means they're going to pass a lot more when they are in between the 10 yard line. And I think that favors Cooper Coop. Okay. So we are bike up on the board. We have our two quarterbacks. Um, I would really, I'm going to end up taking a third quarterback and he's going to be someone that I think is a little frisky. So we'll probably grab someone like, well, as a third quarterback, we're probably going to grab a Cam Newton or Taysom Hill. I like having a high upside third quarterback. You guys are going to be like, yeah, but Taysom Hill, Cam Newton's not high upside. I'm like, fuck you. Yes, he is. He had like fucking four games of over 26 fantasy points last year. Uh, we definitely need to start looking at our wide receiver position to start getting more depth. Now, Michael Bo- uh, Tyler Boyd is still sitting there, which I love. Jarvis Landry, Antonio Brown are all guys I like. I'm actually going to do something a little risque here, a little bit risky here, and wait on wide receiver. Because there are a lot of guys down here that I still like a lot. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab a running back here. I love Damian Harris. So we're going to grab Damian Harris as one of our picks as our fourth running back because we could use him in the flex still. And I love Robert Tunyon. Robert Tunyon cannot go high enough in my rankings. I just think he's everything we look for in a breakout tight end. And he already broke out. You're you're paying for projected breakout with Robert Tunyon when we already saw him break out last year. And now he's going into the year as the unsolicited tight end one in this Green Bay offense. And yes, a lot of his year was based on um, his touchdown total, but he was very efficient on a per target basis as well. And now going into the year as the, as the unencumbered tight end one in Green Bay, I think he's in for a fucking monster year. There's no reason why he shouldn't be. So I'm actually going to grab my tight end one. I'm going to grab my RB four and we are pretty much set at those positions all around. And we will hope that some of these wide receivers fall to us. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not looking good for your boy. But I'd be okay with Cooks. I'd be okay with Boyd. And there they fucking go. I'd be okay with Jarvis Landry, Antonio Brown, Mike Williams, Michael Gallup. So there's still a lot of wide receivers that I'd be very, very much okay with as my wide receiver, too. Um, boom. See what I mean? Like, this is this is why you stack up those really scarce positions, those high end positions that really move the needle for your team. Because even in rounds ten and rounds nine and rounds eleven, we can grab Antonio Brown 
and we get to stack them with Tom Brady, which I fucking love. And then you get your choice. I mean, some of you guys probably like Darnell Mooney as a breakout candidate. Some of you guys, I mean, it's kind of safe with Corey Davis, I guess. But, like, give me Michael Gallup here. I know he has something going on with him at camp, but so does Amari Cooper. Something happens to Amari Cooper. If he misses some time, Gallup's going to be a fucking beast in this offense. So now we look at our starting lineup, man, and I think our, our team is strong as shit. We have, let's see. Tom Brady, Ezekiel Elliott, Aaron Jones, Cooper Cup, Antonio Brown, Michael Gallup, Robert Tunyon, Chris Carson, Damian Harris, Kirk Cousins. Like those those flex plays, those running back flex plays are strong as shite. All right. I'm feeling fucking good about that. We are bike up on the clock. And who do we have sitting here? So we can continue to hammer wide receivers. I think this is probably when I take my quarterback three. The last thing you want to do is leave a 14 team league without a second quarter or without a third quarterback because you're gonna be fucked. If you get a second if you get an injury to a second quarterback and you don't have uh, a backup plan behind him, you are in deep, deep trouble, my friends, because there's going to be another team with a quarterback, too, that's strong, and they just have such a high advantage over you. So you can look at Goff, you can look at Winston, you can look at Cam Newton, you can look at Taysom Hill. Because my two quarterbacks that I have, Brady and Cousins, are very, very dependable, uh, I'm going to shoot for upside in the third quarterback. And I will go with, hmm, who do you guys like more out of Cam Newton, Taysom Hill right now? I think Cam Newton is a little bit safer because I think he definitely has that starting job. Whereas Taysom Hill, who knows? I'm actually, I'm I'm going to roll with Cam here. And then we're sitting here. I kind of wish I took um, Tony Pollard with one of these last picks because I took Zeke. And I know a lot of you guys are on the board of, you know, not fucking taking your handcuffs. But listen, in a season long league, I want my handcuffs. Fuck that. If Zeke goes down, your season's over if you don't have Tony Pollard. Like, I hate when people are like, shoot for upside. It's like, no, you just need to make the fucking playoffs. Give me Tony Pollard, bro. We're in a tournament league, yeah. If you're playing against a million other people in a GPP pr a prize pool, if you're playing in the million-dollar best ball giveaway by Underdog, make sure you download Underdog. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit, and you will be getting free giveaway entry. NYC, BDG Draft Weekend. Skirt. Um, okay. So now we're sitting here. And we probably need to grab our, another wide receiver as bike up. And we will go. I like Traquan. I like him. I really like Emmanuel Sanders. He's like one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite late round wide receivers. I've been saying this for a while, uh, but now reports are coming out that Emmanuel Sanders is a pretty big part of this offense. Or he's looking very good at camp, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm feeling good about that. <clears throat> see what happens here this is i'll probably just continue to stack up late round wide receivers don't take sanders fuck 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 dude aj green too i'm like really in on an aj green uh decent year out of him so we got four running backs there's no one on the running back board that i'm even remotely looking at some good reports out of camp on brian edwards uh, i'll probably grab Jacoby Myers here. Look at that. The Cam Jacoby stack. Is there anything more coveted in fantasy football this year? Besides like 50,000 other things. So we'll go Jacoby. I think he's got a chance of being the wide receiver one. I was listening to a podcast the other day where Matt Harmon was uh, saying he's going to put Jacoby Myers on receptionperception.com. And he's actually really, really surprised by how good Jacoby Myers route running has been. So there's a chance that Jacoby Myers is the one there over Nelson Aguilar. So I'll take him in the end of the 13th round. And then Brian Edwards, Brashad Perriman. Something in me tells me to go with a little bit more safety than Brian Edwards here just because we don't have a lot of depth at wide receiver. And if something happens to one of my starters, we need someone who's going to put up points. So that probably leans to a guy like Brashad Perriman who's going to be starter or Sterling Shepard. I like MVS uh, with with uh, Aaron Rodgers. But I'll probably go with Sterling Shepard here, actually, because he'll get me seven to eight, nine fantasy points per game. Um, Kadarius Tony is in a fucking whirlwind of hell right now. He's on the COVID IR. He, like, was hurt before. He's not performing well. It can't, I don't know. All this nonsense. So Sterling Shepard is feeling more and more like a safety valve blanket for uh, people later in drafts. He's going to be boring, obviously. He'll never be the wide receiver one there, but I think, like, six targets a game will get it done in the 14th round. <clears throat> Look at all those running backs going off the board. All right. Ooh, I love me some De'Ami Brown. I love me some De'Ami Brown. So we're going to stack up De'Ami Brown as a last player. Second to last player for us. And then we still have starting quarterbacks on the board. I don't think this would ever really happen. Um, but I am fine 
going with like Taysom Hill as the last pick if he's actually sitting there on the board. Maybe I would take a tight end, but there's no one on the board that I really like right now. But overall, this is the final roster for my 16 team or 14 team league for you guys. The point being, you need to understand how to value your, uh, you need to understand how to value the correct positions. Tell me my mic. Yeah, my mic is on. Thank God. Uh, you need to understand that in a 14-team league, the positions that are scarce become even more scarce, and they become really, really important to hit on them early, okay? So don't be using early round picks on wide receivers because you are going to regret the shit out of that uh, come later on in the draft, okay? Let me look at some of the teams. Mm, see, like this is team one. Strong team, but this is what happens when you forego quarterback and running back. Your running back two is Devin Singletary, and your quarterbacks are Fitz and Derek Carr. Uh, this is a nice, kind of a nice team. I don't like Travis Etienne. He took Carson Wentz, obviously. This is a fucking computer, so he's going to do some dumb shit. Yeah, overall, I think my team is really, really strong. You see here in the 14th spot, let me move my social name. Make sure you follow me on the socials, at Nick Carlano everywhere. Um. I like my team a lot. Zeke, Aaron Jones, Tom Brady and Kirk Cousins, Chris Carson, Damian Harris, Cooper Cup, Antonio Brown, Michael Gallup, Cam Newton, Drake Juan Smith, Jacoby Myers, Sterling Shepard, Deami Brown, Taysom Hill. <sighs> woof, woof. Let me know what you think of my team. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're doing uh, another 12-team mock draft tomorrow on Underdog. Make sure you download the Underdog app. First link in the description will take you straight to the App Store. Use promo code BDGE and you will be entered into the NYC BDG Draft Weekend Giveaway. Love you. Bye.